What's up guys, I'm Zach, welcome to my shop. Today, we're gonna to be power carving the Nimbus 2001. Up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the real Nimbus 2001 is made out of polished ebony and is about six feet long, which sounds kind of expensive. Instead of using that material, I decided that I'd make the broom portion from walnut and to make the polished black handle, I could use white oak and ebonize it. And I'd make everything at half scale. I began by breaking down two pieces of four quarter walnut from Home Depot on the miter saw and then laminating things together. Next, I broke down the oak, first on the miter saw to get it to length, then on the table saw to rip it to width. And I ripped two pieces and then laminated those together too. The last thing I did was take the leftover oak and cut a bunch of small pieces out of that that I could stack laminate together piece by piece to make what eventually will become the foot stirrups. And now came the fun part. I began with the broom portion and used a turbo plane to begin shaping. Now this isn't an exact science, but the goal was to rough shape it down to somewhat of a broom. I could then use my stationary bench sander to round over the top part of the broom that would connect to the handle, and then back to carving again using a 40 grit flap disc to better refine the shape. I find carving is best with the turbo plane and then smoothing the shape out with the flap disc really can bring your design fully to fruition. To give it more character, I switched to the mini turbo to cut out a bunch of grooves in the piece, and then shockingly, it started to look like a broom. Once that was done, I switched back to the turbo plane to begin shaping the handle. First by hand, then using the bench sander to help refine the handle's shape, curve, and just kind of overall smoothness. And then back to a flap disc to dial in the final look. To make the stirrups for the feet, I switched back to the mini turbo to get into the tighter spaces. And this was much of the same, carving down the piece to get it to a nice rounded shape. Once I did, I took it over to the router table to give it a quarter inch round over on each side, and this was a more safe and delicate solution than trying to give the piece a perfectly rounded profile using just the turbo plane. After finishing the two pieces that would make up the main stirrups, I went back to the handle and used Arbortex contour sander to smooth everything out. And I was impressed with this tool having never used it. It's more delicate than an orbital sander and gives you better control and range to round over edges and create longer, smoother profiles. Lastly, I finished off with some hand sanding on the handle and cut a few smaller pieces that would serve as the bridge pieces between the top and bottom stirrup pieces. Ideally, this entire part could flex and fold up and down, but for the sake of making this out of wood, it would just remain stationary. And before finishing, I cleaned off everything with mineral spirits to get rid of any of the excess dust. Now the real broom has a neat metal outside coating to hold what are supposed to be the broom bristles to the handle. And since I don't have metal working capabilities and this isn't actually a broom, I thought a cool saw would be to have a twisted wire wrap around the piece. To make it, I took some MIG steel welding cable and chucked it up in my drill and then twisted it together. And as a test, it came out great, so I moved on to the real thing, stringing out a really long piece of wire and chucking it back up in the drill and trying to be safe about it, and then just powered the drill until the wire had a twisted aesthetic that I really liked. Now, if I had a small forge, I could take the wire and anneal it to help break away the tension in that newly twisted wire, but since I don't, instead, I slowly wrapped it around a paint can and let it sit for a few days to let the wires adapt to the new twisted tension a bit more. Now, since I wasn't using ebony wood, to make the handle black, I experimented with ebonizing oak. So I mixed up a solution of steel wool and vinegar and let it sit for a few days, and then came back and rubbed that solution onto the oak, and within seconds, the oak blackened and it was freaking cool, and it works really well. I also added a bit to the foot stirrups by taping off the edges, rubbing the solution onto the piece, and then pulling off the painter's tape, leaving with a really cool distinguished color pattern between the regular white oak and the ebonized oak. Now I wanted the walnut to have a darker sheen to it like the real broom, so to push it a bit further, I finished it off with a coat of walnut danish oil, which really helped the walnut darken, but also have the grain and contrast pop to make the design come together. To make the handle look polished, I used just a coat of regular Danish oil and rubbed it on, and this brought out the sheen of the blackened oak without making it look plastic-like, and ultimately it was pretty cool looking. Once the finish had cured, I needed to add the wire and assemble the final piece. To add the legs, I first set up and marked out roughly where the legs should go on the piece, 
and to wedge them in properly, I ended up sanding down the interior of the leg slightly at first, and then marking the locations to pre-drill holes. And the goal was to use two silver metal screws to complement the metal wire that I would be adding momentarily. And pre-drilling in this case was necessary to avoid splitting the really thin, porous nature of white oak. To add the wire, I left in the screws where the feet would eventually attach, and that way I could wrap the wire around it and not cover up those holes that I'd need later on. I began by drilling a very thin hole in the bottom of the piece, just wide enough to fit the wire, and then used Gorilla Glue to wedge in that wire and folded it over. And then layer by layer, I wrapped it around the broom, taking my time to be consistent with the pattern while secretly hoping the entire project didn't fall apart at this point. And with a little love, it didn't and I used a second hole with Gorilla Glue to finish off attaching the wire at the end. To attach the handle, I drilled half inch holes on both the broom and the handle. Then I applied a bunch of glue, hammered in the dowel, and then clamped up the piece very carefully and slowly on a big long four foot clamp, just making sure that things were straight and even and that I didn't ruin the project after all this work. Once that cured, I could pull out the screws for the legs and then carefully screw in the stirrups by hand to finish off the piece. And with the final screws in, the broom was done. And I gotta say, this thing came out pretty freaking sweet. And the answer is yes, it does fly. And I filmed a bunch of that footage, but unfortunately my memory card bugged out, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to look out for future videos, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers!